In this short video, I'm going to show you two cases of lichen aureus which were kindly shared with me by Dr. Antonina Kalmakova of CSD Healthcare in Kiev. Uh, lichen aureus is one of the more easily recognized forms of the group of disorders that is included under the rubric uh, pigmented purpuric dermatoses. Now, traditionally, these are classified into a variety of subtypes, including Majoki's disease, Schamburg's disease, pigmented purpuric lichenoid dermatitis of Gougereau and Bloom, and itching purpura. Now, these, these differential, or these entities, are really based more on clinical observations than they are on histology. And uh, they can be very, it can be a very confusing topic, but I tend to think of them uh, really as, as um, variations on the theme of one entity, which is just basically pigmented purpura. There may or may not be a lichenoid dermal infiltrate. And the diagnosis is very much dependent upon clinical pathological correlation. Now, I don't have the clinical histories for either of these cases, but uh, just to remind you, lichen aureus is a very distinctive clinical condition whereby patients present with one or several um, pigmented plaques um, around, usually on the distal um, lower, lower limbs, although they can be more widespread. And sometimes the lesions can be very large, measuring multiple centimeters in diameter. The lesions are, are, by definition, when we talk about lichen aureus, they are thought to have a golden brown appearance, but sometimes they may be more purple and sometimes there is some additional purpura. It's a very persistent disease and it's usually asymptomatic, but rarely um, there may be some pruritus. Now, I just wanted to mention before looking at the cases that there's a little bit of confusion, uh, I think, about um, pigmented purpura and its relationship to mycosis fungoides. There are two schools of thought. One school of thought thinks, thinks that some examples of um, lichenoid pigmented purpura may gradually evolve into purpuric mycosis fungoides. And the other school of thought is that um, these represent misdiagnoses and that the lesions were mycosis fungoides from the very start. I have mixed views on, on this one. I think we need to bear in mind that sometimes making a diagnosis of mycosis fungoides can be extremely difficult. And uh, when we look at lesions such as I am ones I'm going to show you, one has to look really carefully at the nature of the lymphocytes in the infiltrate. One has to see whether there's any atypia, enlargement, irregularity of the lymphocytes, and whether or not there's any epidermotropism. I think if you find no atypia and no epidermotropism, I think it's extremely unlikely that this is going to be anything other than like an aureus. But if you do find those features, well then, uh, mycosis fungoides presenting with a purpuric lesion is a very real possibility. Immunohistochemistry may sometimes be useful in highlighting epidermotropism, but uh, sometimes you may even need to look for T-cell G-arrangement studies 
but I think such cases are very few and far between. And so the starting point, to my mind, when you look at a case such as this one, is to think of it as being a pigmented purpuric dermatosis and not as a, a possible precursor to mycosis fungoides. Now, having said all of that, if we look at this particular case, one can see that there's a band-like infiltrate occupying the, the superficial dermis. There's not much in the way of, of acanthosis, so, so although the infiltrate's band-like, I don't think lichen planus is, is something that one's going to think about too much in this case, but we'll look at it in higher power and see... Um, what the features are. So there's, there is a little bit of scale, there's a, perhaps a little bit of orthohyperkeratosis, but not an awful lot. The epidermis is, is flat, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, lichen planus I think can be forgotten about. So if we look at this at higher power, we can make out, well we can make out a variety of features we can make out the, the infiltrate, which does not actually abut onto the, uh, the basal layer of the epidermis. It's separated from it by, if, if you like, we could call it a Grenz zone. So there is separation. I'm not seeing any cytoid bodies in the uh, overlying epidermis. There is a, there is a su su suggestion of some edema perhaps affecting some of the basal keratinocytes, um, but I'm not sure whether that's real or not. So let's have a, a closer look. And we can see uh, all of the features now. Firstly, there's lots of red cell extravasation uh, in the superficial uh, part of the papillary dermis. And in fact, we can see there is a lot of edema at the dermal epidermal junction. And then we can see conspicuous capillaries. And on top of that, we can see a lymphohistiocytic infiltrate. Let's magnify it a bit, a little bit further. And, uh, well, lymphocytes, histiocytes. I'm just one I'm just one well that's actually very nice because um we just just to highlight the um the red cell extravasation as we see there. If we go to the deep part of the lesion we can pick up there's a lot of uh, pigment laden macrophages uh, underneath the infiltrate, and that's very typical of a pigmented purpuric dermatosis and fits very nicely with our concept of lichen aureus, which uh, was the clinical suggestion in this case, and uh, this is perfect histology. So that's a nice example of lichen aureus. Now I'm going to look at uh, this slide here, which is a, a pearls Prussian blue, and it's a, well, there you are. You, you can see the pearls Prussian blue is strikingly positive. I, uh, and we can go a bit higher. Isn't that lovely? So there's lots of hemosiderin. There's much more hemosiderin than you'd ever have guessed from the uh, from the uh, H&E. Very, very striking. So uh, a perfect example of, of um, lichen aureus. Now, I just wanted to show you a second case because it, it's, it's, uh, it's always good to see two cases of the one thing because it reinforces the, um, the uh, histology and, and uh, two, well, two is always better than one, isn't it? You'd rather have two million pounds than one million pounds, or leastwise I would anyway. But I suppose one or other would work very well. So here's a second case of, of lichen aureus. And um, again, 
There's a dense infiltrate in the superficial dermis, and we can see that it's sparing the papillary. The, the, there is a grant zone present as there was in the other case. There's not much formation of any scale, and there's no, uh, it doesn't show um, a uh, lichen planus like epidermis. So let's look at this at higher power. And uh, it's really very, very nice. There, there's the infiltrate. You can see it's sparing the superficial papillary dermis. So there's a lovely grant zone. And then um, if we magnify it a bit, we can start making a red cell extravasation. There's a lot of red cell extravasation, but you sort of have to look hard to see it largely because of the density of the lymphohistiocytic infiltrate, but th there's a lovely field there. You see lots and lots of red cells. So this uh, would have uh, uh, accounted for any purpuric element that one might have encountered. Now, perhaps there are one or two lymphocytes in the uh, epidermis, and you, you can sometimes see that in lichen aureus, but they're not atypical, and they're just just scattered here and there. So I, I don't think I'd worry about them too much and I wouldn't worry about this infiltrate either. And uh, again, I'll have to put it, try and get it slightly enlarged without, it. unfortunately it's not really possible to get it into good focus when you enlarge it so much. But I think you can make out there a brown, brownish pigment in the cytoplasm of um, many of the uh, cells in the deep part of the infiltrate. There's some nice fine pigmentation there. This case that doesn't have a, a Prussian blue, but if it did, it would be similarly. And that there, there's an eosinophil. Sometimes you can see an occasional eosinophil in lichen aureus. It doesn't mean anything, it's just well, if, if you see it, you, you see it. There is an interesting variant of pigmented purpuric dermatosis where patients develop um, granulometer in the, um, in, in the infiltrate. And uh, this is sometimes called granulomatous pigmented purpuric dermatosis dermatosis, but I, I don't have an image of that that I can share with you. Uh, and in this very high power view, you, you can see lots of red cells. So that's two cases of lichen aureus, and I hope, I hope this video has been of some use to you, and thank you very much for your, for your attention.